David Huckfeld, Benson Ramsey from the Pines, welcome you guys. Um, two guys from Iowa. Did you meet in Tucson? Is that right? Did I get that right? Yes, Tucson, Arizona. What were you doing there? We were looking for the opposite of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you found it, but then could go home after that. We, yeah. we ran home. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't, uh, you know, sometimes you want to get as far away from your comfort zone and your past and your element and the things that you're used to. And I think that's what brought us out to Tucson individually. But you always keep a little bit of that Midwest inside of you. So when we saw each other, it was basically like, you know, downtown, like across the street. And I, th I think that, that guy is probably, I think that's, from, is that guy from Iowa? I think he is. <laughs> so we just gravitate. Wow. It, it sounds crazy, but it's true. Wow. You can tell. You can tell. <laughs> and then how long did it take for you guys to figure out that you were both interested in music and you're going to be songwriting? And did, was that pretty quick? Oh, no, sorry. Right away. Right away. Right away. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. We hit a really cool zone. We were, I mean, we were both freshly out of Iowa. And then we're just um, finding our own way with everything that we've been instilled with. Like, you know, I grew up on the, the blues and all that folk stuff, and David found that too, and then we were just obsessed with it. And so it was a perfect place for us to kind of, outside of Iowa, where it was like, could really work on it. Yeah. And like just be free and we would just go down and play every night at this little place and we could do that there right and so it was, was also the, the the but the local music was was like norteño or or you know like more of a uh mexican-american kind of music right for sure yeah, yeah and tucson has that you know geography where uh artistically it's it's bursting at the seams but there's not a lot of business there and that's what makes it great you know people are playing for the love it the right. love of playing, Calexico, Giant Sand, right. uh, Reiner Patacek, you know, these acts that never really left the Southwest, and that was appealing to us. It was a lot like Iowa in that way. Because yep. there's a lot of people that we grew up in, I think, are the best musicians in the world that never left Iowa. Wow. And well, they, they just play Iowa. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about this mythical land called Iowa for a second. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to imagine, so it's, it's rural Iowa, and it's wintertime, and you're you know, 10-year-old kid. <sighs> Nick, what's, there's nothing what's you can't do. Like? And what's it, that and day like? What's that day like for you? It messes you up, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's probably not that much different than um, a lot of places out west here. You know, it's just... Uh, Small towns. Yeah, whatever you are into is amplified to about a million, I guess. You know, I don't know if you're into video games. Because there's room that. for everything. Yeah. There's but no, I, yeah, no. I want to no. backtrack just a second and like think about um, when we were in Tucson, um, like watching how like, yeah, there was a lot of mariachi bands and it was really beautiful. And like that was where they were from. And as we were grabbing towards being writers, that's what brought us back was just seeing how like that's how how they incorporated their environment into their music and it just seemed pure and honest just like the blues music that resonated so hard mm -hmm. and all that stuff so that's what brought us back so so being, back being around like indigenous music made you want to go back to the midwest where you were the indigenous music is that what you're saying yes yeah yeah and also i mean uh, minneapolis you know it's like you want to go close to home but you don't want to go exactly back where you used to right. be <laughs> <laughs> so that safe distance you know yeah so you could, yeah <laughs> Spider John Kerner and Tony Glover and these great Minneapolis yeah. musicians and this legacy of folk music, you know, from the time before Dylan on all the way through, that kind of brought us to a new world in Minneapolis. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful musician community, musical community, Minneapolis. They, I heard they had a radio show there for a long time, too. Yeah, it's, I think it's done now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, uh, that's an amazing, amazing community. And... Um, you know, I, I want to mention that on your new record, you also included uh, John Trudell, who's reading a poem of his. How did that come about? What, what, what led to that being an addition on your record? That was, that was a huge experience for us. We actually drove 
south of Rapid City just today, uh, and we passed through close to Pine Ridge where I met John and got to hear him speak many years ago. And uh, something about the, 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 the honesty of his, his, his worldview and the openness of it just drew us so intensely. And we always, in the back of our mind, just thought, man, the kind of music we make would be a nice backdrop for, for this message, you know, for these lyrics. And I, we never thought it would happen necessarily. It seemed like worlds away. And then in Minneapolis, the American Indian Movement uh, was started, you know, in the 70s, and they had this strong presence, and we met some friends of John's. And lo and behold, we brought him to town to do a concert. And he said, why don't you pick a poem and write some music for it, and we'll do something together. And that was Time Dreams. And uh, we just wrote it, and it, it felt like it has existed for a thousand years, and it was brand new at the same time. Yeah. And he was into it, and we were into it. And for us, it's just a huge honor because I think that's a very singular voice in American history, American politics, and, yeah. and humanity. No, it was a, it's a beautiful product, beautiful, you know, the, the fruits of your labors are absolutely worth it. It's really special. In case you just tuned in, you're listening to E-Town. I'm here with David Huckfelt and Benson Ramsey from the Pines. Um, so this journey, you know, you talk about um, the voice of John Trudell and the, the connection and how that feels like a natural fit. And a lot of the lyrics and the imagery that, comes, that, are, that are in your songs are tied to the natural landscape. And do you think that's, again, just from, from growing up around nature, being exposed to that, or, or seeing... You know, I have this, I have this idea that, it, that in watching small towns sort of lose energy uh, in Iowa, as I, I suspect happens sometimes as people move away, then the natural world around them becomes louder and bigger, and, and maybe you're a little more connected to it. I don't know if that's what happens there or not, but... Maybe a little bit, but for sure our towns that we grew up, gone. Unrecognizable. And I think doing what we do and or like I don't think we're any sort of like profound guys or whatever but I think if you sit around and, and you have enough time to think which John Trudell did and you know he started out in the American Indian movement but by the time when we brought him to Minneapolis and he was talking his whole message had changed it was just like You're human, you know, and you're good enough. And like the way we mind the earth, you know, we're mind in our spirits and our bodies and we forget that we're human and our day to day and, and there's pollution from that just like there is from the pipelines and whatever, whatever, not. So I think agriculture is a huge thing which we grew up in and it, it translates to every form of uh, our existence. So, yeah, and every, every geography has their microscope and their telescope, but when you're in Iowa and you're surrounded by farms that have become factory farms and there's not, you can't actually get any of that food. They're not growing food for you. Right. You know, they're growing uh, corn for fructose syrup and, and all this stuff, you know, and it's, it becomes this, you, you know, whatever you thought of as the context of your life flips on a dime and then you wonder why. And then I think... When we look for solutions, that's where you start to look for, you can find it. And John said that too, the music is very important. The music can offer solutions because it brings people together. Well, one, before we get back to music, I want to just get one thing off my chest, which is, you know, you think about Iowa and the factory farms, and I think, is it Smithfield that was actually just bought by the Chinese, and the corn is going to ethanol or fructose, and all the behavior around that is, um, is, is sort of unsustainable. And because Iowa gets to have their caucus, their, their primary so early, it's like every politician goes and panders to this terrible behavior. And then it gets incorporated into people's ideas of what, how they should behave. It's a bizarre thing that Iowa is like the rock star of the United States because everybody goes there and, and learns all this stuff. I mean, uh, it's just a small, minor little thing that I don't expect you guys to change or even have noticed, but... You know, did you see it when you were kids that all these presidential candidates would always come every little corner of Iowa? It's gotten bigger. Yeah. For sure, but... Yeah. What it really does, though, I think, is it develops your sense of humor and irony. 
I remember, and I'm not saying this to offend anybody, but my grandmother was 85 years old, and she was washing dishes on our family farm in Iowa, and and she had told me stories about coming, you know, to see different presidents when they came through town, or a big deal that was. And I, I said, Grandma, and like I said, no offense to anybody, but I said, did you, didn't you say once that if if George W. Bush came to town that you wouldn't go see him? And she said, Dave. She said, I, I wouldn't go see him if he was sitting out in that garage right over there. <laughs> I just thought, whatever your political feelings are, that's a funny thing to say. That's a, that's a very Iowa thing to say, so sharpens your wit, you know. Okay, well, it's not what it seems. I guess what you're saying. I, what, I, I, think it's a, you know, I think it's a great journey that you guys have been on. It's great that you found each other in the wilds of Tucson. And... Uh, and the band has been together now for a while. The first record was, what, 10 or 12 years ago. So this is a beautiful journey. I also love the artwork that I think is absolutely consistent. The cover of the album is absolutely consistent with the message and the imagery that's in the songs, this, this uh, universal connection. We're all under the same sky. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, above the prairie. Yeah, yeah. Just looking down, it makes it, we make, I have a tendency to make everything so complicated. And if you just kind of take the view of a, the cloud or the stars, and it seems pretty simple. I like the fact that our conversation is kind of like Iowa. I would, they, I would there's, there's they take it very room. seriously. There's a lot of space. Like, yeah, they, 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 well, you can drive through this conversation. You might not catch anything, but if you turn off on one of these roads, you're going <laughs> to see a lot of stuff. <laughs> Should we, uh, should, should we be done? Should we just, should we call it? Yeah. My, my yeah. Be. No, no, my <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm really, uh, again, I really, I really enjoyed the record. I'm really glad you guys could stop Thank by. You. It's really fun. Let's Thank get back to music. So Welcome much. back. The Pines. Thank you.